Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. International Central Bank Digital Currency, a CBDC, has been launched by the Digital Currency Monetary Authority. In today's video, I will share the details, everything that you need to know. This is a major development in the CBDC process. Before moving on, please consider subscribing and make sure that you ring the bell to get notified when I upload a new video. If you have been following the news on CBDC, you know just how quickly this process is moving forward. It's moving so quickly partially because there are so many things that are going on behind the scenes, that are going on behind closed doors, and this is one of them. Of course, we know that CBDCs have received quite a bit of a pushback virtually from all people around the world. Not governments, of course, but I'm talking about people because of the level of control and the lack of privacy that digital currencies entail. It's become crystal clear that most of us won't switch to a CBDC voluntarily. This is true here in the United States and it's also true in China, for example. That is why the Chinese government created the digital yuan with an expiration date and even used discounts to incentivize people to use the Chinese CBDC for grocery purchases. I covered that in detail previously. So it's becoming increasingly clear that there has to be a really significant event, something life-changing that would make a central bank digital currency appear to be the solution. So with that being said, in the midst of the banking crisis, the Digital Currency Monetary Authority launches an international central bank digital currency called Unicoin. We haven't really come across any reports about pilot programs or limited scope rollouts. So obviously the infrastructure is in place, it is working, it is not at the beginning development stages that we've been hearing about, it's not in the research stage, it's already developed and it's ready to go. The Digital Currency Monetary Authority is an entity that was established fairly recently. Effectively, this is a structure formed by the World Bank and the IMF, International Monetary Fund. According to its website, its mission is to enable trade globalization through the monetary integration of international payments and settlements. It reimagines the next wave of cryptographic innovations engineered attention for adoption by central banks, retail and commercial banks, fintech, governments, and cryptocurrency exchanges. Membership within the Digital Currency Monetary Authority consists of sovereign states, central banks, commercial and retail banks, and other financial institutions. So this is a truly global, a truly international entity. To sum up the agenda of this entity, its primary mission, its primary goal has been to create a universal monetary unit, which is precisely the purpose of a CBDC. Make no mistake, Unicoin is a stepping stone. It's going to be used as a framework for the digital dollar and any other digital currency issued by your central bank. The press release pointed out that Unicoin already incorporates the latest government regulations. According to the press release, the CBDC, which is referred to here as the Universal Monetary Unit, UMU, functions like a CBDC to enforce banking regulations. The digital currency is symbolized as a character that looks similar to an English letter U. It is legally a money commodity. It can transact in any legal tender settlement currency and functions like a CBDC to enforce banking regulations and to protect the financial integrity of the international banking system. Unicoin, an international central bank digital currency CBDC that can transact swift like cross-border payments over digital currency rails, completely bypassing the correspondent banking system at best price wholesale foreign exchange rates and with instantaneous real-time settlement. According to Daryl Hubbard, the executive director of the Digital Authority and the chief architect of Unicoin, this vision expressed by the IMF is the exact solution that the Digital Money Authority is delivering to central banks worldwide. 
here's the catch, and this is precisely what we have been discussing here on my channel all along. The universal monetary unit can be configured to operate according to the central banking regulations of each participating jurisdiction. This means that whether there is an expiration date or maybe limits in terms of location where you can use your money, where you can use your so-called unicoin, all of this is just a setting, it is a configuration that can be turned on or turned off by the CBDC issuer, the central bank or the Federal Reserve in our case. The new CBDC is being marketed as a complementary system. Merchants and trading partners could accept universal monetary unit for the equivalent market value of their goods and services priced in any national legal tender. Unicoin has premium exchange rates built into its wallet and can convert any settlement currency amount to the equivalent universal monetary unit amount. At this point, you may be thinking, what does the United States have to say about all of this? As it turns out, Brian Swan, the former deputy chief data officer for the US Treasury, has been serving as an informal advisor to the Digital Currency Money Authority. He believes that the new CBDC is a game changer in banking. The universal monetary unit architecture is a framework that allows every central bank to configure its own compliance rules. So because Unicoin enables central banks or their member banks to configure their own regulatory rules, this is where there's that unique platform that was needed to adopt CBDCs, to adopt individual CBDCs with the central digital currency that is then used by international central banks as a starting point to implement their own CBDCs tailored to their unique policies, to their unique direction that their government wants to take. It's not a distant future, this is already here, it's been implemented, it's already launched. The banking industry seems to be extremely supportive of this. For example, one of the CEOs at a settlement bank even referred to it as inspiring. A quick word about our sponsor today, Birch Gold. The banking crisis is showing us that keeping your money in a bank is no longer safe. Now is the time to diversify your savings with physical precious metals, including gold and silver. You want to keep some of your savings invested in gold and silver, the ultimate store of value. With Birch Gold, you can purchase precious metals for physical possession if you choose to. They will mail the gold that you purchase directly to you, or you can choose to roll over your retirement account into a precious metals IRA with zero tax implications or penalties. There are three steps to preserving our savings. We need to protect our savings from market volatility, we need to hedge against inflation, and to safeguard against geopolitical instability these days. Birch Gold will help you achieve those goals. Follow the link shared in the description below to get started and speak to a precious metals specialist. Let me know what you think about this new development that we just discussed in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. As always, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and consider sharing it. Show your support. It goes a long way here on YouTube and Rumble as well. Subscribe to my channels on YouTube and Rumble. I would love to have you back for my next one. And if you enjoy reading, check out my newsletter available on Substack. I'll see you in my new one tomorrow. Take care.